multi threading is a very important aspect of ui based applications we will discuss that how we can develop a multi threaded application in wpf and i will be demonstrating a very small application with the help of background worker and this application will actually uh, create a counter and this application will be responsive when we are actually running this uh, task and we can start this stop this and restart it again and this is uh, this is all done with the help of background worker in wpf so let's see why do we need this and how we did this with the help of background worker so the question is that why do we need multi threaded applications or ui multi threaded applications so the problem is that whenever we are performing some lengthy operations such as lengthy loops we are looking for the uh, user input on a port listening on a port and maybe uh, searching for a file system and processing some files reading some large files even writing some big data in files and even doing some uh, operation on a live server reading or accessing the live server and sending a request and waiting for the response so for these kind of lengthy tasks some of them they are not predictable that how long they will run and sometimes we don't know that uh, how much uh, long will it take to complete the task for example if i'm scanning a file system for uh, searching for uh, file different file types and i don't know that how deep is the directory structure and how deep i need to go and look for the files and uh, similarly if i send a request on a web server i need to wait because i don't know how long will it take to get a response from a web server many factors are uh, connected with the, this type of request so in that time meanwhile when you send a request your ui will remain unresponsive it will not respond to you while you get a response it's just like this that when you are when you are running a code uh, when it uh, completes the execution such as in event driven programming when an event is uh, the execution of that event is just completed uh, you are done and your ui get the response back to you and then you can perform that operation again and again and again and so on but the problem is that for example if we are working with the uh, large loops uh in this case if you see that example over here uh in this example if you have a uh, a lengthy loop uh, which is uh, this code is written behind that button click uh until and unless this loop uh, completes the execution uh button will remain in a pressed state and will not get back to the normal state and you your application will held and will not respond to you you cannot perform any other operation so here is an example of a simple multi threaded uh, uh, application that we want to build so let's see the what kind of problem we are in uh in this application a small application we have a uh, label we are not using it right now but we will be using later on but just to demonstrate the problem we have a button over here and uh, this button has a click event handler so if i write a lengthy loop over here let's say for example a long loop and uh, meanwhile if i let's say just control uh, console console log so i will just write line this uh, uh counter and uh, just to uh, see the output and put the delay of uh, this uh, counter so that i can uh, kind of uh, simulate the problem that what kind of problem it is i will just sleep the current thread with the help of uh, thread class and i will sleep it for 1000 milliseconds it takes uh, the argument in in integer which is in milliseconds so 1000 millisecond is 1 second so it will wait for 1 second and will continue this loop so let's assume that this is not a loop this is some kind of uh, large process which you are going to perform behind this button click that can be anything a request to a web server listening on a port for uh, an incoming connection 
or maybe you are processing some large files searching for the file system this can be any long process I'm just putting a loop just to see and just to demonstrate that what kind of problem we get in our UI based applications when they are not multi-threaded application so let's run this so here is my output window and if I uh, start this you see that it's uh, printing this counter and the, it's executing and thread is sleep for uh, uh, one second so after every one second it's uh, uh, presenting you uh, the output now the problem is that my UI thread is held and it's not responding because uh, it's currently processing this piece of code and I cannot perform any operation I cannot even launch it back and the button is still in the press state and will not end this execution whereas if I have a let's say for example smaller loop let's say for example just for the five digits and I sleep for the one second and when I press start you see that counter is coming and this button is is hang and now it's uh, again in the normal state so if I press it again now it's in a press state and now it's a normal state so if I press it again I cannot not I cannot even this window even now you see it's moved like this so this is the problem so we want to perform such a heavy task and such a uh, such a task that is a longer and will take much time uh, in a separate thread so that our UI remain responsive and child process will execute this kind of lengthy processes so let's see uh, how we can do this in uh, WPF and uh, in the dotnet uh, UI based applications to perform such a multi threading in our application uh, we need to create a child process which can actually uh, perform this task in a separate thread there are several options available in dot net uh, and there are many options such as thread pool such, such as a thread class and uh, there is also one option in dot net framework which we can use and uh, build our multi-threaded UI based application with the help of background worker so I personally like background worker because background worker is quite easy to work with the UI applications and provides uh, many functions in this we can actually update the user the progress of uh, execution of the process and so on so let's see that how we can implement the background worker in our uh, UI base application so background worker is actually available in uh, system dot uh, component model and uh, uh, system dot component model namespace and th this that's a class background worker class and it supports following events do work progress changed and run worker completed so these are the three events that background worker class uh, uh, triggers on different uh, operations so do work is actually is the most important in the heart of this uh, background worker class which is actually the main thread and the task that you want to do and the lengthy task which actually makes your UI not responding and uh, makes your UI held and this is the task that is the heavy lifting task that you will perform in a do work event progress stage event will be used and will be uh, triggered uh, when you report a progress uh, or the report progress method is called uh, it is used to uh, update the UI based on the current process for example you are scanning like 100 files and 1000 files and you want to show a progress bar and you want to update the user that I am scanning this file or I am reading this file or I am writing these files so you want to update the user that what's happening inside this uh, do work uh, lengthy process so you use uh, progress change and progress change event is triggered as soon as you report the progress 
uh, with the help of report progress method. And the third event is triggered when the do work actually completes the process. The execution of the do work completes as soon as it's done. When work is completed, is triggered, and uh, you can show the user some uh, some message. Let's say, for example, finished. I have scanned that much files, and I got that response from the server, and so on. So these are the three events which are the very important and the most important. in uh, background worker class do work progress change and run worker completed so if you are working with the uh, winforms development background worker is available in your uh, toolbox uh, as a component over here and then you can actually drag and drop that on your uh, form if you are working on a winform and it also provides uh, some properties you can uh, add events and uh, the, the the two most important properties are worker reports progress and worker supports cancellation if they are true then you can actually report progress and the progress change event will be triggered and also worker supports cancellation which means that the process is running if a, if a background worker thread is running you can cancel that thread and if that is allowed in your thread you can cancel it otherwise you cannot do this so these are two properties which is actually of type boolean and uh, by default uh, they are false and you need to make it true so that if you want to your worker to report progress and if you want your worker or the background worker to uh, to to be able to cancel the execution at any time there are also in winforms there is also a ui uh, in the properties you can uh, add the events just like we have in our uh, normal applications with the the components so these are three events directly available uh, in the property window uh, or the events window in the winform but unfortunately these are not available in wpf so how do we do this in wpf you don't need to worry about it it's easy to do this in uh, wpf we just create or we just first import the system dot component model namespace and we just declare the object of a background worker and we can after creating the object we can actually add do work progress change and run worker completed events by our own so by adding these events these events will be added and we can actually write our code inside these events and we can work around and similarly for the uh, for the properties we can also do this uh, work uh, reports progress we can set it to true and uh, it will allow worker to background worker to report the progress and if if you want to support your worker to work with the cancellation if you want to cancel it any time stop the execution any time and uh, most of the time it's required and uh, you can make these properties true through the object of background worker so that's how actually you work with the wpf and the background worker so let's recall our problem so the, our problem was that this is a lengthy process that we want to do this and perform this in a separate thread so that our ui remain responsive and this should be run this should be executed by a separate thread uh, to do this uh, we need to perform this operation inside the do work event callback function so to run our code or to run the pro, pro, the multi threaded process with the help of background worker we have created the object of background worker at the class level and uh, we can call the run worker async method as soon as you call this run worker async method it will trigger the function which is do work event so all the process that you want to perform in a separate thread you need to put that code inside the do work uh, a callback function and uh, you have added this uh, event as a event handler so that's how you can actually uh, start the background worker and this is the very basic example of a background worker 
and if you look back into our problem we can solve our problem which was actually the halting the ui now our ui will not be halted and all the data will be printed on console and meanwhile we can actually work with our application and we can perform other operation while this operation is performing by the application so let's see how we do this so this was our program where we had a button and behind that button we are actually running this process and we now need to convert this process as a separate thread so that our ui remain responsive when we are actually working with this so for this i can first clean that up to remove and uh, sort usings so i will remove the usings which are not in use so i will add system dot component model namespace and i need to have a background worker object i need to create that object and i can create this at a class level so background worker let's say for example bg worker is equal to new background worker so i am just creating the object and if you remember we need to add three event handlers for background worker so bg sorry so as soon as we initialize the components we will add background worker events over here so do work is the very important and most essential uh, event and if, and if you see that it's saying that you need to call run worker async so that do work will start the execution so i will just add this i will press tab to insert this worker and i will put the implementation over here inside this so our heavy lifting task which was actually making our application not responding i will put this task inside do work and when i press the button i want to start the thread so to do this i need to call run worker async method as soon as i call run worker async method it will run or trigger uh, the execution of do work so let's see that how we do this and what would be the output so now if i press the start button it's starting the counter and you see that my application also responding right you see so if i let's say clean this up and start it again so as soon as i start it's running a separate thread and it's working i can also do this uh, a little more things on this so let's see that how we perform other operations with this so another thing is that how about if i press this start button twice so if i press the start and then start again now we have a problem the that background worker is currently busy and cannot run multiple tasks concurrently so to perform multiple tasks we need to have a separate background worker or we need to handle something over here in the do work so when i press the button it's actually running the task again and trying to call this uh, do work and want to start a new thread to handle the situation we can actually check the background worker that if it's busy or if it's not busy then we actually run uh, the async uh, run worker async method so if it's uh, busy we will not do this so if it's not busy uh, then we will run this task otherwise uh, nothing will happen maybe we can show a message that uh, it's already running and uh, it needs uh, to stop and something like this so if i start this and start this again nothing will happen because it's busy already and if i start again it will start the counter again and so on so how about it would be very nice if i run this and as soon as i run this i change the text of this uh, button 
with the help of content property to make it stop okay <clears throat> so if I run this and if I start now it's saying stop but it's not stopping this the thing is that if I want to stop this I need to support the cancellation right and I need to have uh, an event that I can add later on but the thing is that I want to cancel the execu execution as soon as I stop this so if the worker is uh, not busy uh, which means that it's a, in a stopped state uh, it's a it will change the text to this stop and uh, what about if my worker is busy and if I press the button where the content would be stop I want to stop the execution of this so for this I need to cancel async so request cancellation of a pending diagram operation the process which is running I want to cancel this so uh, to cancel this I need to call this function so when I call this function uh, it only works if I provide the cancellation option with the background worker object so again I'm writing over here I'm wrong so bg worker dot worker supports cancellation is true yes we can now cancel the uh, the execution of this process anytime and uh, <clears throat> this will uh, actually uh, try to cancel the execution so let's see are we done with this will it stop the execution of do work so start stop nothing happened it's still running because the thing is that we need to handle this or we need to check that if the worker has sent a request for the cancellation so I can check after this over here that if my background worker object has a request for the pending cancellation or not so cancellation pending so if there is a cancellation uh, cancellation pending I can actually break that loop so this break will break this loop and will exit the uh, counter and uh, I can write maybe a console message so that you can see that it's actually executing the or the breaking the loop so the thread is exiting let's see So if I run this, if I press the start, it will start the do work. If I press the stop, thread is exiting. All the text is not changed. I need to change the text over here so that when it's done with the cancellation, it will turn back to the start. <coughs> So if I press the start, it's running over here. If I press the stop, thread is exiting. If I press the start, it's starting from the beginning. If I press the stop, it stopped. If I press the start again, and if I press the stop, it stopped. So that's how actually you can run the thread and you can stop the thread already executing the thread. So cancellation pending is a very nice thing because uh, maybe over here you are executing and writing some files, reading some files, writing something into the files. So there must be a very safe place where you exit the thread. You cannot just just abort the thread because aborting the thread may cause some uh, stray pointers in your file system, and then maybe you are your your program is a in a state where you have opened the file but you did not close the file so it's important that once a cancellation request is sent you can check in your code that where do I want to 
check the cancellation pending and then I can actually stop the execution of the of the thread or the do work process so that's how actually you start and stop the thread so let's move our program from the console to the UI so that we see the counter uh, increments inside this label so to do this it's uh, quite easy that instead of writing on console maybe we can also write on console and we can also put this inside this uh, txt box which we have uh, sorry label we have label counter dot content so we actually change the content every time uh, with the new content so we are actually updating our UI with the help of background worker so let's see how we do this So if I start the button, it should start the counters, write the counter uh, and on console and also uh, should update over here. So let's see either it performs this operation or not. So we have a problem over here that calling thread cannot access this object because a different thread owns it. So here is an important thing that you need to remember that whenever you are running a UI based application, it's running on a separate thread. And the cross thread, the other thread who is running some process, you cannot directly access the elements of other thread in this way. There is a proper through proper channel way and uh, adopting that way you can actually access the other thread or the UI thread in our case. So in this case, we have uh, events available and the functions available will, which will be helpful in uh, updating the UI. So that's why in the beginning I told that I like background worker because it's quite easy to update the UI as compared to other options in .NET framework. So let's see how we do this. So we cannot access the UI thread directly inside do work but we can access this ui element inside the other events which are available with the background worker so these events are progress changed so progress changed event is something that we need to trigger and we need to update the ui so instead of doing this over here we need to do this over here and how this event would, would be would be triggered we need to do this through a calling a function which is a background worker function which is reports progress so when we report progress we have two options over here we can send the percentage of the progress we can send the state of the object over here as well so it also depends on us so when we choose the percentage, so percentage could be from 0 to 100, 100 it actually use for the uh, for the processes or for the functions that we are going to perform in our application where we, where we know that how much elements we are going to process. So let's say for example I am reading 100 files or writing 100 files, I know that I am processing 100 files so I can actually tell that I'm reading file number 25 right now and we can also send with the help of the other argument which is an object type which means that we can send anything maybe we want to send the file name so the first argument will only be used to send the percentage and the second argument can be used to send the file name in this our case the situation that we are right now we cannot actually we don't need to send the user state or the second argument we can actually send the percentage in this case we are just sending the uh, the counter over here so I will send the counter over here and I can get this percentage from uh, uh, process change event argument and I can uh, receive both things the the state object and also the progress uh, progress percentage uh, uh, property as well which is returning me the percentage so in this case we are just receiving the integer and I am sending or assigning this integer to this uh, content property <coughs> so 
as soon as I call this function report progress, it will trigger the progress changed. And pro progress changed event can directly access the UI elements. So let's see how we do this, either we achieve this or not. So if I run this and if I press the start, it is saying the background worker state does not uh, report progress, which means that progress reports is not allowed by default. It's for I have told you in the beginning that worker sports cancellation is by default is false. We need to make it true by uh, ourselves. So also worker supports uh, reports the progress. So worker can report the progress now and as soon as I report the progress it will uh, trigger the event and will update the UI so you see that it's now updating the UI and it's not a problem I can do that and stopped at 4 because the loop is less than 5 uh, starting from uh, 5 uh, from 0 till less than 5 so I can make it a bit more uh, sensible so I can also reduce to the half second or maybe less than that and maybe increase the counter to to a larger number <coughs> so if I start and now it's running and it's also pending on console and I can actually move this application this application is running fine I can open and see the progress what's happening over here I can stop this I can although when I start this again it will start from the beginning but my thread is working and it's updating the UI so that's how you do this and uh, we can also work on this so that if I instead of stop I can put a pause option over here I can add more buttons over here so that one button can be used to pause and one can be used to reset the the counter like this and uh, I can increase the speed of that counter as well to make it let's say for example 100 milliseconds so let's do this so now you see the counter is running and it's responding and it's updating the UI with the help of background worker so another thing is that when the counter is complete when uh, it's done it, it it's again showing the stop uh, option over here so to do this we need to add an another event handler which is bg worker dot run worker completed so this event is triggered as soon as do work is done with the execution so as soon as this for loop ends and the body of do work completes it triggers the completed uh, event so it will trigger this and I can change the content of this uh, start button to make it again to start So let's make uh, a loop a bit smaller so that we don't need to wait longer time. So let's make it like 10. So if I run this and if I press start, it's saying start. If I stop. So another thing is that if it's not start and it's uh, completed or finished. And uh, if I somehow run this start and stop, when I stop this actually I uh, stop the execution by myself it's not actually completed the execution so I stopped or I actually cancelled this so how can I figure out that this was actually the operation of uh, cancellation instead of actually completion 
so to identify that I can go and I can tell that when I am cancelling the progress I can tell this event that I am actually cancelling this with the help of e.cancel which is doer event argument so with the help of this I can actually tell that it's cancelled it's not stopped and I can actually check it over here with the help of e which is even uh, run worker completed even argument so e dot cancelled if it's cancelled I want to say something else over here so I can say that stopped so make it a bit bigger so that we see the text So if I start and if I stop, it says that it stopped, although I just stopped at the, the tenth. So if I stop, it says stop. So if I if I keep it like this, let it complete, it's saying completed. Which means that we can also identify, we can differentiate that when the the progress was actually stopped, user has cancelled the copying of files and the requests and scanning. Or user actually or or the process uh, finished itself which means the do worker actually the execution of do worker ended by itself through the normal execution or user actually cancelled this so we can actually take the help of event argument and we can tell that I am actually cancelling this execution which means that I am actually trying to break this loop and getting out of this loop but this event argument, uh, this event will would never know that either it was uh, uh, this loop was broke like this with the help of uh, break, uh, or uh, or actually it was completed. So we can actually send a signal from here from e dot cancel, and we can actually identify with the help of e dot cancel. So with the help of this we can actually differentiate between that and depending on upon that we can display the appropriate message to the user and we can identify that either this process was completed itself or user actually stopped the execution so that's how actually we do this just to add few final touches uh, to our counter application I will uh, just make it a bit uh, more sensible so I will actually instead of uh, adding this uh, button and putting the text over here I will actually make this counter as a, a, a as a status so I will put a status over here initially this there is no status uh, and uh, I will actually use that status and will up update that status ba based on the condition of the our uh, background worker uh, thread so I will use lbl status dot content and I will say that it's running and I will say that <coughs> it's uh, stopped and uh, I will say that instead of uh, the button I will use the content the status content uh, <coughs> now it will say the completed like this and it will say the running and it will say the stopped and uh, let's run this now so if I say start it's saying running if I say stopped it's uh, stopped and instead of stopped it should say the start so it should say the start in any way and it should say the in the content it should say the stop 
so actually I will keep it as as stopped and I will say that it should use the status label and would update the status label with the stop and in any way I will just make this button btn start content to <coughs> start because we are not just uh, we are maintaining two states stop and start that's it so when I say start it's uh, updating the status it's running so as soon as it completes it say the completed and again the button set uh, the button text is start so if I stop in the middle it say the stopped and again the button uh, state is start you can try working on this to make it pause and uh, start and can take uh, add an, another button which will actually reset the counter and so on so you can actually do this stop and start stop and it stopped and if I say start it's running and I can stop it and it start we can also make it like this that I can uh, give it a pause and instead of uh, start and stop I can pause it so it's all up to you that how you want to uh, do the, uh, the functionality how you want to implement the functionality so last thing I want to show you over here is that the progress bar so I can add a progress bar over here so let's add a progress bar like this so progress bar has a property which is uh, the value I cannot type it right now so it must be inside the common so this is the change and the maximum and the minimum value and the current value is zero so initially the progress bar has no value so I will give it a, a name so that because I want to change the the progress bar value so I can call it progress bar <coughs> So as soon as I uh, update the UI, I also want to update the progress bar. So this dot uh, progress bar dot value, which is uh, a type of double. So I can actually uh, retrieve from the progress percentage, which is as a, 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 which is an integer, and I can assign this uh, value to this. Uh, in this case uh, we have uh, the maximum value is 10 but progress bar actually works from the 0 to 100 value and if you see when I was selecting this it's, it's, it has a maximum value of 100 so I can actually change this to, uh, to 10 as well and uh, I can choose that how much progress I need to show and what's the total number of uh, elements I want to process and show that so this is the progress bar it's also increasing depending upon this so it's out of it's showing 10 filled 10% uh, filled out of 100 so I can actually modify this as well to make it uh, maximum or maybe I can do this uh, programmatically over here so I can uh, specify the uh, the counter max value counter max is 10 let's say and I can use this counter max over here so this dot uh, it's 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 not at the class level so first I will make it at class level but I can actually initialize it over here so I will use a counter max over here like this and I can change the progress bar maximum value to this dot counter max so whenever I change the uh, maximum value of a counter progress bar maximum value would be accordingly so if I press the start so it's the maximum value is 10 so this is the complete value over here and if I change the uh, max counter I can also make it a constant so that I cannot modify it later on uh, let's make it uh, 100 and if I speed up a bit 
by 100 milliseconds and if I run this now so it will update the progress value where it is here it is so it will update the progress bar value as well so it's running and I can stop it I can start it and it's running and now the maximum value is depending upon the value of uh, this uh, counter max uh, variable so I am actually dynamically changing this depending upon this okay so that was the last thing that uh, I wanted to discuss that's how we can actually work with the background worker so that was all about the multi setting with the help of background worker in a WPF application we have built a very small application in which we actually use the counter and the counter works with the start stop with the progress bar and its status and we can stop it anywhere anytime and we can start it again and my application is responding the UI is not held and that's how actually we uh, do this with the help of background worker in WPF you can try working with this you can uh, re uh, receive this uh, code or download this uh, application and the code from the github account and uh, you can uh, work with this and you can actually convert this application into the two counters one counter would be used for the increment counter and another counter could be used for the for the decrement counter and you can also work around with another type of applications let's say for example you want to generate a random number for for a kind of uh, poll and something like this and you want to actually generate a random number for the draws and like this and you can actually work uh, with this kind of application you can develop this kind of application so that you see the list of uh, <coughs> registration numbers and uh, serial numbers rotating in front of you and then you can actually start and stop uh, and you can take the draws and like this and you can develop this application in WPF with the help of background worker it's easy background worker is quite easy working with the UI applications and that's all actually we uh, work with this and we learn this so try on your own and just practice this and see how you can develop your applications uh, multi-threaded application in WPF with the help of background worker.